And now, stay tuned for the program that is rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Transcribed by the Signal Oil Company to enable the entire production staff of The Whistler to spend the New Year's weekend at home with their families. Signal, the famous go farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Fatal Step. It was a clear night. A high moon bathing the giant concrete columns and sweeping approaches to an unfinished stretch of bridge in the outskirts of the city. The area was seemingly deserted, all traffic being routed around it until the end of construction. But there was some movement, some light. A man alone, walking along one of the approaches, high up over the street below. And unknown to him, another man, Carl Fabian, higher up, drawn back in the shadows of a support column, watching, waiting... Expectantly. And then, as the two figures converge, Carl Fabian steps out. Good evening, Mr. Evans. Yes, uh, who is it? The name is Fabian. Carl? Carl Fabian. Oh, Mr. Fabian. What do you want? I'm just a little curious, that's all. Curious? Yes, about you. Your plans. Uh, you enjoying this job here? This foreman, I mean? I'm getting along. Didn't I see something in the paper about the Crime Commission asking you questions about the Latimer Construction Company? I'm not supposed to discuss that with anybody, Mr. Fabian. Not even with me, the real head of Latimer Construction? Look, Evans, there are other jobs, better paying. You think you might be interested? You're uh, offering me a better job? Maybe, if you've no objection to traveling. I like it here in town. There might be a sizable cash bonus, Evans. In fact, I'm quite sure it could be arranged. I'm not interested. Well, you should be. I might say you better be, Evans. Yes? It's important to me that you leave this job and get out of town. I'm offering you money and a job. Well? For your information, Mr. Fabian, I intend to report this entire conversation when I'm called in by the Crime Commission. Really? And what makes you think you'll ever be called again, Mr. Evans? Hmm. What makes you think you'll be able to answer their questions? Now, get away from me. I haven't done anything to... So you like it here, eh? Well, that's fine, because you're going to be here a long time. He went over the railing, didn't he, Carl? The simple, clean-cut way to be rid of the talkative Mr. Harry Evans. It's the way matters like this were attended to in some of your less legitimate enterprises. Where you got your start, before you moved in on construction work. But now you know that you must get down there, Carl. Fifty feet below, make certain that Evans is dead. At the end of the ramp, you catch sight of him. Freeze in your tracks as you see something else. A lantern. The night watchman, Carl, and coming your way. You leap back into the protection of the tool shed, crouch against its dark shadows. The watchman calls out to someone. Brady, get over here. Something's happened. What is it, Mac? Who is it, Mac? What happened to the guy? He went over the rail. Still alive, I think. You better go for the ambulance. Oh, gosh, the poor devil. Hurry, Mac, the ambulance. Maybe there's a chance. Yeah, yeah, I'll hurry. He's alive, isn't he, Carl? Alive. Harry Evans, the conscientious foreman that your partner and front man, Joe Latimer, had hired. The foreman so conscientious he made a habit of visiting the job every night. It was this nightly habit that decided you to pay him this unexpected visit. 
And now he's still alive, and there's nothing you can do about it. Not now. Now you can only think of escape, but even that seems impossible, doesn't it? And then finally, the wail of an ambulance siren. And soon the attendants join the night watchman employed by the Latimer Construction Company. And the man he called Mac. No use. He's done for. Accident, huh? Yeah, that's what it was. Hmm. You say he's foreman on the job? That's right. Harry Evans. He was in the habit of stopping by here at night looking things over. I see. If you two don't mind answering a few questions? Oh, certainly no, not. No, not at all. Your name? Wagner. Address? 4420 East Ellis. It was terribly close, wasn't it, Carl? The watchman reaching Harry Evans before he died. You weren't even sure that he hadn't found out something. But you're sure you're in the clear. His report to the ambulance attendant was simple and complete. Accidental death, they'll call it. And you're sure you're rid of Harry Evans. Rid of him forever. The following evening, your mind is on more pleasant things. The occasion, a smart supper party. And a girl named Leona to help put you in a pleasant frame of mind. The attractive niece of Judge Victor Mayfield. And you seem to be practically the only man she cares to dance with. You've come a long way in the past few years, haven't you, Carl? Many people think of you as a legitimate businessman. But despite your responsible front, at heart you're still the same racketeer you've always been. Aren't you, Carl? Well, Carl, you seem to be enjoying yourself after all. I didn't say I wouldn't, Leona. I thought I was surprised that the judge put in an appearance. So was he. Oh, I'm used to having my own way. Perhaps it's best that you know that. And I'm part of your plans? Why not? An eligible bachelor? Perhaps one of the most sought after? Oh. Carl Fabian, 40-ish, single, tall, rugged, handsome. <laughs> Sounds like a description from a Western novel. Oh, let me finish. Head of Fabian Enterprises, a real political force in our fair city. Oh, I don't know about that. I do. The judge does. We also know you're the brains and money behind the Latimer Construction Company. What about it? Nothing. Except that it's a distinction to be part of the city's great expansion, growth. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> well, don't sound so somber. Oh, sorry. Oh, the uh, music stopped. Sorry about that, too. Yeah, I really am. Come on, meet my uncle. Who knows? Someday you might get a parking ticket. <laughs> and if the judge could do me any good, what could I do for him? You could at least be pleasant. Maybe even help him remodel his home. Isn't that what some of you big contractors try to do? Little favors for influential men? <laughs> Leona, you're quite a girl. Oh, I'm on good behavior tonight. Besides... Yeah? You're quite a boy. <laughs> Well, Carl, everything is perfect, isn't it? It seems you're on top of the world. And the following day after the supper party, even the nervousness of your partner, Joe Latimer, supposed head of the Latimer Construction Company, fails to dim your optimistic outlook. Joe, on the other hand, is very upset as you talk in the privacy of your penthouse apartment. Take it easy, Joe. I tell you, everything's going to be all right. I hope you're right. Have you heard anything to the contrary? No, but... Carl, I've been meaning to speak to you. We're, we're riding too high. It's, it's dangerous. But fun, Joe, fun. I'm not so sure. I, I don't sleep so good lately. Joe, you'd better take a little brandy in your coffee. You're shaking. No, no, I, I'm okay. Oh, well, good. Because, you see, Joe, if you're getting any ideas about pulling out... I mean, well, remember, this Evans thing doesn't stand all by itself. Let's remember how we built the Latimer Construction Company. How we'll go on building it. Oh, no, Carl. I have no intention of changing anything. Good boy. I, I just want you to reassure me, that's all, that, that we'll have no trouble, that nobody suspects anything about Harry Evans. Nobody does, Joe. There's no way, believe me. It's simple. Harry Evans was about to talk to the wrong people, the Crime Commission. You and I knew he would have said the wrong thing. Yes, yes. I know you liked Evans. Yes, he worked for me, that's all. I... I'm not criticizing, Carl. We have to look out for ourselves. Now you're talking. You see, Joe... Are you expecting somebody? No. Well, 
I'll be near the room. There's no need asking for trouble. Okay, good idea, John. Good morning, Mr. Fabian. Oh, Lieutenant Reyes. Good morning. Come in. Now, just stop by for a routine questioning. I suppose you heard about the foreman on the Latimer Bridge job being killed? Yes, very tragic accident. We're not too sure about that accident part, Mr. Fabian. Huh? Uh, mind telling me when you last saw Harry Evans, the foreman? Only at the questionings, you know, the crime committee. Yes, yes, I know. They start in again next week, huh? Yes, I understand. Evans was supposed to be able to make it pretty hot for you, Mr. Fabian. Did you know that? I had no idea. We weren't personal friends. So I understand. But he uh, worked for a friend of yours, didn't he? Oh, I know Joe Latimer, if that's what you mean. That's what I mean. Okay, Mr. Fabian, I'll see you at the crime hearings, huh? I'll be there, Lieutenant. I believe all of us should feel it our duty to come forward and answer anything, anytime. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Fabian. Are you sure you won't come in, Lieutenant, have a cup of coffee? Yes, I'm sure. Thanks, just the same. See you around. That was a cop, wasn't it, Carl? A cop. Lieutenant Reyes, yes. Why? What difference does it make? How can you ask that? How can you stand there and not blink an eye when there's police around asking questions? How, you? Simple. Because I'm a man with nothing to fear, that's how. You worry about construction, Joe. Oh, incidentally, contact Frank Kelsey for me today. Frank Kelsey? Why? I think Judge Mayfield is going to want some work done around his house. Around his house? We're not interested in jobs like that. But the Kelsey Construction Company will be. Tell Frank I said to submit a low bid on any work the judge requires. Tell him I mean low enough to be sure he gets the job. I don't follow. It's simple, Joe. I'll be able to hold it over the judge at a later date. Just in case we need somebody on our side. Oh, sure, sure. I'll talk to Frank Kelsey this morning. You do that, Joe. And now you better run out to the office. Keep things humming. You know, nose to the grindstone and all that. Sure, sure, Carl. I, I was just leaving. Joe's the nervous type, isn't he, Carl? Liable to go to pieces under pressure. You, on the other hand, must see that no pressure occurs. You must keep a tight rein on your operation. A few moments later, the door buzzer sounds again. You wonder if Joe's nerves have gotten the best of him and if he's back for more assurance. But that isn't the case. The man at the door is the last man on earth that you want to see right now. Hello, Mr. Fabian. Uh, hello. I can see you don't remember me. Well, it's understandable. Guess we never did meet face to face. I, uh seem to recall your voice. It... Oh, you heard it that night, huh? Where were you? Uh, maybe hiding by the tool shed? The night watchman. The night watchman. Dreary job, Mr. Fabian. Nothing like this. Penthouse and all. Thought maybe you'd want to help me change it all. Change it? Yes, you see, uh, Harry Evans wasn't quite dead when I reached him. Remember? He whispered your name. No one will ever believe that it's it's fantastic. Oh, come off it. You don't really think you're going to send me away with a remark like that. Now, Mr. Fabian, I think you're going to be real hospitable. Invite me into your penthouse. Well? Uh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Come in. Because the approach of a new year is always an appropriate time to take stock of one's blessings, we of the Signal Oil Organization would like to take this opportunity to express our appreciation to all of you who have given us so much for which to be thankful. To you loyal Whistler fans whose continued preference for Signal products has helped us grow from a small start in one state into an organization now serving seven western states, we are genuinely grateful. To independent signal dealers whose conscientious service has helped so much to keep customers and their cars happy, we are mighty appreciative. So that all of us in the Signal Oil family may continue to merit your friendship and your business, you can count on us to continue our policy of making signal products ever finer and signal services even more complete. Throughout the coming year, 
as for the past 21 years. We shall do everything in our power to make your stops at signal stations, as well as your miles behind the wheel. Happy ones. Until the night watchman in the bridge construction job dropped in, you thought you were in the clear. You were certain of it, weren't you, Carl? Certain that no one can prove that you had killed Harry Evans to prevent him from appearing as a witness in the forthcoming crime committee hearing. But now, Carl, your visitor, the night watchman at the bridge job, heard Evans brand you as a killer. You could deny it all, couldn't you, Carl? Or you could silence the little man who now stands before you in your living room twisting a battered hat in his hand. I know what's going through your mind just about now, Mr. Fabian. Do you? I think you should know that I didn't come up here tonight without any, uh, protection. I wrote a letter. Everything I know about that little accident is in that letter. I see. Now, if anything was to happen to me... Oh, nothing will. You needn't worry about that, Mr. Uh... Wagner... But you may call me Ernie. All my friends call me Ernie. All right, Ernie. Um, uh, sit down. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Fabian. I, I will. Uh, tell me, Ernie, uh, how do you like your present job? Fine. Just fine. Uh, would you like it better at, say, uh, double your present salary? Well, that sounds real interesting. Only... If it's uh... more money you want... Uh... Uh, I wouldn't mind that, Mr. Fabian, but... Uh... Then what is it? Well, I'm sort of getting along, you know. It's time a man of my years retired. Oh, of course, Jimmy. I quite agree. I I think you misunderstand me. I said double the salary. I said nothing about you having to work. Oh. (laughs) Well, that's mighty nice of you, Mr. Fabian. Real generous. I think so, too. Well, uh, it's settled then? Sure. Sure, Mr. Fabian. You've disposed of the threat, temporarily at least, haven't you, Carl? Yes. And that's all you wanted to do for the moment. But you know a man like Ernie Wagner can be dangerous because of what he knows, what he can do. And you know, too, that before long, you'll have to rid yourself of him somehow, permanently. The following morning, you call the Latimer Company. Mr. Latimer's office. Edna? Oh, hello, Carl. How are you? Fine, honey. Is uh, Latimer there? Uh, no, he went out some time ago, but he'll be back this afternoon. Shall I have him call you? Yeah, what'd you do that, Rena? Uh, any minute? Yeah. Mr. Latimer had a visitor this morning. Did he? The district attorney. The district attorney? They had a very long talk. I see. What about? Well, I don't know. I, I tried to find out, but when I walked into the office, they clammed up. They were in the office for about an hour. And when they came out, Mr. Latimer told the DA he'd think it over and let him know. Thanks, honey. Buy yourself something and send me the bill as usual. It's something to worry about, isn't it, Carl? The district attorney's visit to Latimer's office. It's possible that Latimer is going to be called as a witness at the crime committee hearings, isn't it? And you wonder why Latimer hasn't told you about it. There must be a reason, Carl. Yes. Perhaps the district attorney has offered him a deal. Latimer could double-cross you, couldn't he? Tell him what he knows. You decide to have a little chat with him as soon as possible. But because he's delayed at Coal Town, you have to wait till the next day to see him. Hey, good morning, Joe. Oh, Carl, sit down. Oh, thanks. Uh, what's on your mind? Well, first of all, Joe, uh, how about that Kelsey bed? Oh, it went through okay. The judge accepted it. Kelsey and his boys started on it this morning. Fine, fine. Something else you wanted to talk about? Oh, yeah. I uh, want you to double a man's salary, Joe. A man named Wagner, Ernie Wagner. Oh, the night watchman on the bridge job. What, what's the idea? Blackmail. What? He knows I pushed Harry Evans off that ramp. He knows? Yeah, Harry was still alive when the watchman reached him. I see. Now, look, Carl, about his salary. What's wrong? Well... Couldn't you handle it some other way? I, I don't want to get we mixed up. We do it up. my way. He gets twice the money in retirement. 
Okay, okay, but... And stop worrying. I'm the guy who's to appear before the committee, not you. I know, Carl, but... You haven't been summoned, have you? Me? Why, no, no. Okay. But if by any chance you are summoned, you'll let me know right away, won't you, Joe? Oh, yeah, sure, I'll let you know, Carl. Fine. Well, I've got an appointment. I'll see you. Okay, Carl. Edna. Yes, Carl? I want you to keep a very close tab on what goes on around here from now on. Very well, Carl. I want to know every move Latimer makes, who his visitors are, who he talks to on the phone. You understand? Yes. I understand, Carl. It's important you keep a close watch on Latimer from now on, isn't it, Carl? Until you decide what you must do. He didn't mention the district attorney's visit, so you know he intends to double-cross you. But before that happens, you'll know about it, won't you? Yes. You know you can count on Edna. There's no word from her the next day. But the following morning, she calls. Okay, sweetheart, what is it? Latimer just talked to Judge Mayfield on the phone. Mayfield? What did he say? Well, nothing much, except he made an appointment to meet the judge at his home tonight. Eight o'clock. I see. Then he called the district attorney's office. Ask the D.A. to meet him at the judge's home. The district attorney is bringing a stenographer. A stenographer? All right, Edna, thanks. You know exactly what your partner, Joe Latimer, plans to do, don't you, Carl? Yes. First, he'll reveal the trap you set up to implicate Judge Mayfield. And then he's going to file a written statement with the district attorney... Reveal all he knows about you and your activities. But that meeting isn't going to take place, is it? Because you're going to act first. You call Leona, make a date. Ask her to stop by your apartment first for cocktail. You'll need a perfect alibi for what you plan, won't you, Carl? And who could prove a better one than the niece of Judge Mayfield? And that evening when she arrives... Sorry I'm late, darling. Only a few minutes. I'm afraid I'm the one who's late, Leona. I just got here a few minutes ago. Business appointment. Haven't had time to change yet. Uh, you mentioned cocktails. Could the lady have one while she waits? Uh, Chair, my house boy is fixing a batch of martinis now. Extra dry. Just the way you like it. Good. Here, let me take your things. Uh-huh. Now, don't go away. Silly man, as if I would. You hurry into the bedroom, then slip out onto the terrace, down the fire escape to the next floor. There you take the private elevator down to the garage. And a few moments later, you're racing toward Judge Mayfield's house. At ten minutes to eight, you're standing in the shadows along the front walk to the judge's house. A few minutes later, a car stops in front. Then you hear footsteps approaching. Hello, Latimer. Car. Calling on the judge? I, uh, oh, yes, I... I don't think you'll make it, Joe. Oh, now, wait, Carl. Let me explain. I haven't that time. Sorry, Joe. Ten minutes later, you're back in your bedroom, changing quickly into your evening clothes. Your little plan worked perfectly, didn't it, Carl? No slips. And you're highly pleased with the way things have turned out for you. I'm sorry it took so long, Leona. I'm a bit of a slow poke when it comes to dressing, I'm afraid. Mm, let me look at you. <laughs> Darling, how can any one man look so handsome, so distinguished? <laughs> Flattery <laughs> will get you practically anything you want, dear lady. Have I told you how beautiful you are, Miss Higgins? As beautiful as some of the other creatures you've known? More so, darling. I don't believe a word of it, but I'd like to hear you say it. Here, I've poured you a drink. Oh, thanks. To you, Carl. To us. And a bright, happy future. No cares, no worries. That's right, Leona. No cares, no worries. Extra pep, extra pep, take those hills in high. Put signal Ethel in your car and it will really fly. If you're surprised to hear Marvin Miller sing, just wait till you hear your car sing when you treat it to its first tank full of Signal Ethel, the premium grade of Signal's famous Go Farther gasoline. Yes, it'll be music to your ears on cold mornings when you touch the starter and presto, 
your motor starts humming a tune quicker than you can turn on your radio. When it comes to acceleration, Signal Ethel will show you pep that makes even Dixieland jazz seem tame. And with Signal Ethel's responsive power, you'll soar up hills as smoothly and high as a coloratura from the Met soars to high C. And why not? After all, Signal Ethel is engineered to bring out the best in any car of any age. So if it's best performance you want, just remember the famous last verse of that great shower room tenor, Marvin Miller. Go farther and have fun. Enjoy your every spin. To get more out of any car, put Signal Ethel in. You're certain you're in the clear this time, aren't you, Carl? Yes. Even though you know the police will suspect you, that you had the motive, they won't be able to prove that you killed Joe Latimer. And you've arranged an alibi, too, haven't you? Leona Anders, niece of the highly respected Judge Mayfield. And so, after an evening of dining and dancing, the two of you return to your apartment. As you step inside... Chan, oh, Chan, are you... Evening, Mr. Fabian. Well, well, Lieutenant Race. Uh, allow me, Miss Sanders, Lieutenant Race, homicide. How do you do, Miss Sanders? Homicide? Is something wrong, Lieutenant? Yeah, what's all this about? Joe Latimer was murdered tonight, Mr. Fabian. Joe murdered? Good Lord. It happened in front of Judge Mayfield's house. The judge heard the shot and found the body. Oh, Carl, how horrible. Oh, get right to the point, Mr. Fabian. Where were you this evening? Why, Leon and I were at the Holloway Club. Well, of course. Mind what? trimming me in on the time, Mr. Fabian? Well, let me see. We arrived here at the apartment shortly after 7.30. That's we right. Left somewhere around 8.15 and went directly to the club. Mm-hmm. Joe Latimer was killed at approximately 10 minutes to 8. Where were you at 10 minutes of 8, Mr. Fabian? Well, I told you right here. The owner can tell you. Was he with you all the time, Miss Anders? Well, no. He went into the bedroom to dress. How long was he in there? Oh, 10, 15 minutes, I suppose. Now, but see... Now, maybe he wasn't in the bedroom. You could have slept out, Mr. Fabian, drove over to Judge Mayfield's house and killed Adam. Well, that's interesting, Lieutenant, but I'm afraid you'll have to have some proof to get very far. I think I have. These, your shoes, Mr. Fabian. My shoes? I found them in your bedroom. If you look closely, you'll see traces of fresh cement on them. What? The cement you stepped in was almost dry. Otherwise, you probably would have noticed it when you changed your shoes. I don't know what you're talking about. The killer left some perfect footprints in the cement to Judge Mayfield's new patio. And if the prints match your shoes... The judge's patio? That's right. The judge is having some work done around the new house. The cement patio had been put in just this morning by the Kelsey Construction Company. But I don't suppose you'd know anything about that, would you, Mr. Fabian? That whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Signal Oil Company has asked me to remind you, there's an easy way we can all help to make this holiday season happier for ourselves and others. Drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Ted DeCorsia, Joe Gilbert, Ed Begley, Leo Cleary, Joe Forte, and Herbert Litton. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Adrian John Doe, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transcribed and transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on the Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company.